welcome in the name of Jesus to another online worship service here at Holy Cross Lutheran Church and School. We praise and thank God that you're able to join us and we pray God's blessings upon you, particularly this Memorial Day weekend. And we thank and praise God for all those that have given their lives for us and a reminder of our Lord and Savior Jesus who gave his life for us as well. Plans are for online services again next weekend and then be watching the words of comfort and hope where plans are for uh, actually in-house worship services then in June 6th and 7th that weekend. Again, watch uh, the words of comfort and hope for that. This weekend we have our teacher that we are calling teacher Karen Maxson who is coming and visiting with us this weekend. She's going to be house hunting Please pray for her as she, uh, as the Lord leads her to find a house and as she uh, begins the transition for us to be here. This past weekend, Pastor Bolvin was here and he is, has found an apartment as he is still house hunting, so please keep him in your prayers as well. We have another new person with us, and that's Ellie Makowski. Ellie, come on. Ellie happens to be here with us, so we're very, very happy to have her come on up, and we can put a face with a name for Ellie that way. Ellie is a Concordia Seward uh, student, DCE student, and she is here for summer intern. What a unique summer. Thanks for being with us, Ellie. All right, God's blessings to you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. This Thursday, actually today as we tape this, is the ascension of our Lord 40 days after Easter. So if you've had an Easter cross, one of the He is Risen crosses in your yard, it's time to uh, bring those back. We'll store those for next year once again. And thank you so much for having that opportunity for a great witness. And so you can bring those back here to the church and we will store those for next year. Those are the announcements for this morning. We begin with our opening hymn, How Firm a Foundation, from Lutheran Service Book 728. We sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! We give thanks to God for the gift of eternal life, and we spend our days in joyful repentance and faith. So 
Let us confess the sin that entangles us and then receive the full forgiveness our Lord provides for us. Christ, Christ who once was slain, slain, has burst his three-day prison. Our faith is certain, because Christ has now arisen. As your humble children, we ask that you forgive us, renew us, unite us as one in your service, and lead us into joyful Easter living. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join me as we pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father, now seated at his right hand. As As you send send the Holy Spirit Spirit to us through your your word word and sacraments, sacraments, strengthen strengthen our faith to endure endure every every trial and and to live in the hope of eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now Now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The first scripture reading comes to us from Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 12, as Matthias is chosen to replace Judas. We read, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With a reward he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language Akaldelma, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. Our second scripture reading, the epistle reading from 1 Peter chapter 4 and 5, selected verses, Peter writes to us God's word about suffering as a Christian. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? 
And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. We go to the Ministry of Music and hear a duet, a firm foundation from Ann Harms and Ted Betcher. And the Holy Gospel for this weekend, also the text for our sermon for today, Jesus' words, his high priestly prayer. We read, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, 
that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Boys and girls, if you're at home about to listen to the children's message, I invite you to come closer so that you can see and hear well. Adults and children, if you're in the parking lot or listening on the radio, you'll have to do a specially good job today of putting on your thinking cap and your imagination. May God bless us as we hear his precious word. Pastor Myers read for us the gospel reading just a moment ago, which was a special prayer of Jesus. Jesus prayed that his disciples be one, that they would testify, that they would tell others, the whole world, about the message of Jesus' death and resurrection and Jesus reigning in heaven with the Father for us. Let's think of it this way. If you're watching, you can see that I have two things in my hands. If you're listening on the radio, imagine in your mind that in my left hand I have the top of a cookie tin. And in my right hand, I have the bottom of the cookie tin, the vessel itself. So how many things do I have in my hands? Well, with your imagination and with your eyes, you can see I have two things. But when I put the top on the cookie tin, on the bottom, how many things would you say I have now in my hands? Probably we'd say one thing. The two, when joined together, become one thing. Maybe that'll help us think about what Jesus was praying in his high priestly prayer. You see, we know Jesus. We know that he came to the world to live and die and be raised again. And we know the Father is in heaven watching over everything, creating everything, and sustaining and caring for everything. But we also know that the Father and the Son, along with the Spirit, are one God. It's a marvelous, it's a mysterious thing. Jesus talked about that in his prayer for today, but he also said another thing. He said, if my disciples are in me and I am in them, then they are one with me and one with the Father. I have with me, you can see or you can imagine, some wonderful chocolate chip cookies that Mrs. Snow made. And I'm going to add those chocolate chip cookies to our cookie tin. Jesus said, if you are in me and I am in you, then we are one with one another. We can be represented by these cookies and we're in the Father and the Father is with Jesus. They are one and how many things do I have? I have one. I have a cookie tin filled with cookies. That's a marvelous thing. It's a mystery. And Jesus was praying for those of us as believers in him that we could be in him and him in us and he in the Father and we all be one. But he also said something else. He said, you know, I have others who are not yet part of the Father and part of me. 
They have another bag of cookies, different from the first ones. They can represent other people in the world who are not believers in Jesus. Jesus invites them too, and I can add those to the cookie tin also. And there's plenty of room for me to add all of these into the cookie tin so that those cookies and the first ones can be in the cookie tin all together. Just as people who come to believe in Jesus like we do are added to us. Faith in Jesus, faith in the Father, all together one. Now, my cookie tin is only so big. I can only add so many cookies to it. But you know what? God is greater than all things. God is large enough, great enough to invite all people in the whole world. And as we who know Jesus and are one with him tell others about him, we pray that the Holy Spirit would work through our witness and through our words so that they too can see and hear and believe and be saved, that they can be added to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and be one with him and one with us. God bless you, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, as you today and always share the message of Jesus, that he lived and died and rose again, and because of that, we're one with him. He's forgiven our sins that separate us from him and makes us one with each other and with him and gives us the privilege, too, of telling others about him so they can be one with him, too. God bless you as you do so for Jesus' sake. Amen. We pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for sending Jesus to be our Savior we thank you for the great mystery of how Father, Son, and Holy Spirit can all be one, and that you invite us, many of us, to be one with you too. We thank you that by the work of your Spirit, you have received us and made us believers in Jesus so that we can be one with you. Use us, our witness, our mouths, our lives, to tell others too about Jesus so that they might see and hear and believe and be saved and be one with us and with you. As you prayed for us, Lord, we ask that you would continue to pray for us, watch over us, and keep us safe by your power. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening, boys and girls, and for watching too. May God bless you. Sometimes the way is lonely and steep and filled with pain. So if you're 
sky is dark and pours the rain. The cry of Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, and live. When the love spills over and music fills the night, and when you can contain In the powerful and precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. We welcome you once again, as we often do, to this service of worship. If you're worshiping with us online from home or anywhere around the country or listening from the parking lot, we pray that God would bless you as you hear and receive his precious word. If you're not a member of Holy Cross, if you don't have a Bible at home, we encourage you to let us know that. Please contact us so that we can get a Bible into your hands so that you can read and study God's precious word. May God bless my speaking and your hearing. For Jesus' sake, amen. Today, our attention is centered on the words of Jesus from the Gospel of John. We read from John chapter 17, and as we read God's word, we're reminded in the first words of our text that John says, after this, Jesus said, and then he looked toward heaven and prayed. After Jesus said this, well, what's the this that he said? As we look at John chapter 16, Jesus was speaking with his disciples, as Jesus spoke with those disciples, he said, Brothers, there is a time coming when you will be sad. You'll be sad because the time is coming when I will be leaving you. Pastor mentioned at the beginning of the service, today is the day of the ascension as we record this weekend service. The time when Jesus would leave his earthly disciples, his earthly work would be completely finished and he would ascend to the Father from which he had descended before the beginning of his earthly ministry. Jesus knew that time was coming and he said to the disciples, you will be sad because I won't be here. Jesus knew that there would be uncertainties, that there would be hardships, that the disciples would face difficulties. And he wanted them to know that while they wouldn't be able to see him in the same way they had done the last three years, he would nevertheless always be with them. What Jesus said to them is that there is a time coming, John 16 verse 32, a time coming when you will be scattered, each one to his own home. Does that sound a little bit like today? each of us scattered to our own homes, each of us self-quarantined, each of us apart from, away from one another and those who are normally around us. Jesus said to those early disciples in verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. 
In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus knew the needs of those early disciples, and he knows our need too, our need for peace. And when we're scattered and self-quarantined, Jesus speaks to our hearts. And Jesus says to us, have peace. Because in the world, yes, you will have troubles as we have today. But know this, Jesus tells us, I have overcome the world, and I am in you, and you are in me. After Jesus had said this to his disciples, now John chapter 17, he looks up to the Father and Jesus prays. How often in Jesus' earthly ministry, he took time to be in consultation, in conversation, in communion with his heavenly Father and with our Father in heaven. Jesus consulted with the Father, Jesus spoke to the Father, and in this most beautiful of prayers, called Jesus' high priestly prayer, he prays for his disciples. As he prayed, he prayed for those early disciples. He knew the difficulties and hardships. He knew that it would be hard for them when he ascended to the Father, but he also knew the rest of their earthly lives, the lives of each of his disciples. He knew their travels. He knew their tribulations. He knew the trials that they would undergo in all the days to come. And as Jesus knew that, he wanted them to know that he was always with them. He prayed for them. He prayed that they would be protected. And he prayed that their ministry would go forward unhampered, unheeded. And that his message, the message of the gospel, would go through them to all the world. Jesus prayed for them. Jesus prayed that they would be one. Jesus prayed for those disciples that they would know that he was always with them to comfort and care for them. In Jesus' high priestly prayer, he prayed that God the Father would be glorified. And how did that glory come? The Father was glorified when the Son was glorified. Glorify yourself, Father, in me. Jesus said that his work was almost complete. And because of his completed work here in the world, the Father would be glorified in the glory which belonged to the Son. How was Jesus greatest glorified? Well, in a way that we would least expect. As Jesus hung dying on the cross for the sins of the whole world, for the sins of those disciples and we, his disciples today, and for the sins of the whole world, that's how Jesus was best and greatest glorified. Jesus said, glorify me, Father, when I return to you in that glory that was ours before the beginning of the world. His work complete, his sacrifice for you and me complete. He would be glorified by sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven, reigning to all eternity. In Jesus' high priestly prayer, Jesus says also, you will be glorified, Father, as we are made one, and as our people listen to the word that you have given me. Jesus said, Father, you've given me these disciples, and I've given them your word. And as they have received your word, they have also heard it. They have believed that word. And as they've believed that word, it's become part of them and they've obeyed it. Father, glorify yourself in these disciples as they know what you've taught me and what I've taught them that they've received the message of the gospel, that they've believed in the salvation of the world and the forgiveness of their sins, that they obey my teachings, Father, which are your teachings. Jesus prayed for those first disciples, and I believe that long ago, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was praying, he wasn't just praying for that group of 12 he was praying also for you and me. 
Acts chapter 1, one of the lessons also for this weekend reminds us that the disciples were to witness to the message of the resurrection. Remember when they were missing a disciple, God showed them by lots who should be drawn and who would be added to that group of 12, those who had been with Jesus, who'd heard and seen, who'd believed, and now were eyewitnesses to the message of the resurrection of Jesus. How should they be one? They should be one in the message of the resurrection, in the message of the gospel. As Jesus prays for us, brothers and sisters, as he did then 2,000 years ago, he intercedes for us now before the throne in heaven. The Holy Spirit speaks with sighs too great for us to be able to express in words, and Jesus continues to be our advocate. An advocate is a speaker, someone who speaks on someone else's behalf. And Jesus continues to advocate, to speak on our behalf to the Father in heaven before that gracious, glorious throne. Jesus prays for us as believers here at Holy Cross. Not just a place, but you know, the church is people. Jesus prays for us. And Jesus' high priestly prayer for us today and through our earthly lives and ministries, is that we too be one. He prayed a long time ago for those first disciples that God protect those disciples by his power that they be one in witness and in ministry. And Jesus prays that for us too. He prays that we would be protected by his power. And I believe he does that during this time of pandemic, during this time of crisis, from this time to the end of the world as situations are hard, as we know hardship and difficulties and uncertainties, Jesus is with us. He's praying to the Father that we be protected by his almighty power and that we be united as one. Just like those first disciples, united in the message of the resurrection. And how powerfully, how wonderfully God has united us in this place. Pastor Myers and I know that we stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before us. Pastor Crane and Pastor Trost and so many others from the beginning of our congregation. We believe that God makes us one in the message of the ministry of the gospel. And it's our privilege soon to invite soon to be Pastor Bowman to be a part of that gospel ministry, the message of proclamation here in Wichita and across the whole world. Now God makes us one. He unites us with the faculty of this place, with our administrator, Mrs. Betcher, in our school, with all of the teachers and aides and assistants who help us in ministry in this place so that we can be united in one in our ministry of church and school. Beyond these, God gives us so many resources, so many opportunities, so many people with skills, and how wonderfully they have united in one to do the ministry in these past months and in the days to come. Many of you have contacted us by phone and text and by letters and all kinds of ways to tell us how much you've appreciated the ministry that's taken place. Well, the world around us has been so severely shaken. We're thankful for the music ministry, for the instrumentalists, for Mr. Betcher, our organist, for the folks that play on Saturday night for our contemporary services, that style of music as well. And we're thankful also for the online music ensemble including Teresa and Butch and Betty, Connelly and Pat and Tracy and Marty. What a blessing they've been to us through the course of these last several months. For these and many others who've served, we are thankful. God has made us one with them to do this ministry together. 
and how remarkably, how wonderfully, God provides at just the right moment just what's necessary to do the ministry he sets before us. We're thankful for the gift of technology. We're thankful for the Copelands who make it possible for some of you right now to hear my voice in the parking lot. What a wonderful blessing they've been to us in helping us do this ministry to share the ministry of the resurrection in that wonderful way. We've also had the opportunity through the people that provide technology with David and Shay and Brian and Jamie and so many others who've used the gift of technology so that the message of the gospel could go forward. They too unite with us as one that we might do this work together. You see, this has been a time of uncertainty and hardship and some might even say crisis. It reminds me of the Chinese word for crisis. Now, I know those of you listening in the parking lot will have to Google this later when you get back home, but if you're watching this, worship service, you can see on the screen the Chinese word for crisis. It's actually made up of two characters. The Chinese language is a picture language. And these two characters in the Chinese word crisis stand for two other words. One of those is danger and the second is opportunity. You see, each crisis Every difficulty and hardship is a crisis, but also an opportunity mixed with danger. During this time of pandemic, we certainly know and understand the aspect of danger, but also we've seen the opportunities God gives us to reach out with new technologies in ways that we've never done before. And we've heard here at Holy Cross how people across the city, across the state, across the nation have been able to be a part of these worship services in ways like we've never done before. Truly an opportunity as guide, God guides us to be one in the ministry of witness and the ministry of the resurrection. You see, God plants us in this place to be a beacon of the gospel. In our world, there is much trial and difficulty and uncertainty. There's much fear and apprehension. But God gives us, through the power of his word, as he protects us by his power and makes us one, he gives us the opportunity in this crisis to be able to be a beacon of the gospel. Our world in the days to come, I believe, as we understand Scripture, will grow darker and darker. How will God protect us? In what ways in the future? How will he call us together as one that we might continue to be a beacon of the gospel? God blesses us and God will still. You see, it takes many hands and God draws us together that we might be one. In the image on the screen, and you'll have to see this later again if you're watching in the parking lot, there are many hands that make one cross. Many hands together in unique ways that point to the message of Jesus. May God bless us, brothers and sisters, to be a part of this unique opportunity. During time of crisis, when we are uncertain, remember this, that Jesus did and Jesus does pray for you and me. He prays to the Father that we would be in the word, that we would receive it, that we would believe it and obey it, that we would be drawn together to be his witnesses, witnesses of the gospel. And by his gracious power, he protects us and draws us together as one. We are united with one another, with Jesus, with the Father, and with the Spirit that we might be one with him. May God bless us to that end. For Jesus' sake, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, one with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are united with him, one with him, in the faith that we confess and share. 
Today we confess the words of the Nicene Creed as our statement of unity in Christ, in the Trinity, and with one another. Boldly for ourselves and all the world to hear, we confess together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. One God, one faith, united with him as one. For Jesus' sake, amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your prayers, Jesus' prayers, for his first disciples and for the prayers of Jesus for us, your disciples today. Make us one, unified in our determination to serve you through our words and actions as we live in our world today. At your ascension, you commissioned us to make disciples by baptizing and teaching. And so, this Sunday, we rejoice with Dan and Helena Stevens and family at the baptism of their son, Ezekiel. Continue to be a blessing in that family and in all those who look to you for the blessings of baptism, the gift of faith. We pray, Lord, for the gift of health and wisdom and protection to all who are in authority, those making, administering, and judging our laws in order that they rule according to your good will and pleasure especially guide and direct our governors and our elected leaders as business reopens and people return back to work and social settings. We give thanks and continued bless praise to you for the blessings of Pastor Bowman and teacher Karen Maxwell and Ellie Mikowski being here with us. Lord, bless Pastor Bowman and teacher Maxon as they prepare to move, as they find housing, and as they begin their ministry with us. We ask your blessings, Lord, on graduates, many graduates of high school and college and even grade school, and the different means of celebrating be with these graduates and their families as you continue to be with them in new areas of their lives. On this Memorial Day weekend, we give thanks for all those who courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the examples of their sacrifice inspire in us the selfless love of Jesus our Savior. Bless the families of fallen troops and fill their homes and lives with your strength and peace. Lord, be with those who have been hospitalized. We thank and praise you that Russ Ketterman is able to be home. We pray for continued healing for him and for others whom we know who have been hospitalized or who will be hospitalized. We ask for safe travels once again for Tripp and Ashley Stratton as they travel to New York this next week for routine scans and a stent change once again. 
we do give thanks and praise to you for the past 10 years of numerous treatments and trips for them. Lord, we pray as you are the comforter of those who grieve. We pray for the family of Kathy Nock, who died so suddenly this week. We also pray, Lord, your comfort for Bill and Sandra Wensloff as they grieve the death of their older daughter, Gretchen Wensloff, who died also this week in Ohio. Be with them and bless them. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your peace. And Lord Jesus, as you have promised to come and return after you have prepared a place for us, help us always to be ready to be one with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you have taught us to pray, and so we pray that special prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and always give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We sing together the closing hymn, I'm Going Free, or known as Jailbreak. Speak against my borrowed innocence. The judge is my defense. I'm going free. Right when the cattle bell, I heard the freedom bell ring through the heart of hell. I'm going free. I'm going free. Go back again, that's just not who I am. Lord, I'm a brand new man, I'm going free. I'm on a narrow road, it's made with grace and hope. It's gonna lead me home, I'm going free. I'm going Is my
jailbreak, I'm going free. As we finish up our worship services again today, we hear Jesus' continued words, additional words of Jesus from John chapter 14. Jesus says, My Father will send the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, in my name. He, the Holy Spirit, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Go in that peace and joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus who makes us one in him. Amen.